awful lot going on, but it's okay. Because mm -hmm. we still got the word of God to deliver. And we're going to do this. We good? Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God is good. Shalom. We give God the glory and praise for another day He has given us to honor Him and worship Him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day, this time. We thank you for your blessings that you've given to us. We thank you, Father, for the sunshine and the warmth. We thank you for this season and time, Father, that we can enjoy your bounty, Father. You brought a lot of rain upon uh, our community. Father, and we thank you for that rain because it is, we've seen the beauty of uh, our nature, things that are preparing us, Father, for our fall and the winter time. Father, you have perfect timing in everything you do, Father God. Your timing is not our timing, Father. Our timing can be flawed, but yours is always perfect. And we thank you for that, Father, as that you will bless each ear that hears this word today, Father, as that you will touch each heart that receives it, Father, in the mind that can conceive uh, the things that you have for us, the direction you are giving us, the uh, word that helps us to be obedient, to follow your directions, Father. Those that are not here today, as that you will bless them uh, wherever they are, meet them at the points of their needs, provide protection and guidance for them, Father healing, Father, for anyone that is sick, and prosperity for those, Father, who are struggling today. Yes. We know that all things are in your hands, and we give you glory, and we give you praise, because we are your children, and we know that you provide for each and every one of us, Father. Your yes. word is said that you will give us the desires of our heart, and we delight ourselves in you. So we thank you for that, and we'll give you glory and praise in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So God is good. And oh, we give him the, yeah, all the time. <laughs> and all the time, God is good. Yes, He is. And I thank God for that. We have been on the um, teaching of keys to kingdom living. Um, I am so uh, thankful to God that He has blessed us. Uh, the time I look around and I see the things that God is still continuing to do for us and with us, I know it is nothing but His grace and His mercy that has given us the kingdom of God here on the earth. Amen. Uh, I don't believe that a lot of um, people in the world today understand the blessings that God has given. So many people believe that they are doing things on their own. Michelle and I, we had, we did a um, uh, sightseeing tour of Columbus. So, uh, that sounds rather strange. You lived here all your life and now you're doing sightseeing. Trust me, it was so interesting that Michelle and I uh, went and we uh, went up the short north. I don't know if you've been there in a long time, but I'm going to tell you, you ain't seen nothing like it. I got lost. Columbus is exploding. Uh, there is so <coughs> much uh, prosperity yes. uh, that is showing itself in the city. Uh, we're seeing so much growth, apartment buildings, and, uh, of businesses that are flocking to the city. And um, it would be easy for people to say, well, you know, we've, we've done this and we've done that and we've planted this and we've planted that without really giving God the glory. Understanding that nothing can be done without God's grace and mercy. Amen. So uh, it behooves you. If you have an opportunity and you got the gas, <laughs> go on a tour of the short north, the short parts of, of, of west downtown, uh, go up to campus, some, it's just, it's totally different. And I'm just thanking God that he's bringing prosperity 
uh, to this city. So it behooves us to, uh, I remember my, uh, my former pastor would say, you don't want to always have God bless what you're doing. You find out what God is blessing and you do yeah, that. that. Amen. Amen. When we find out what the things that God is doing and we can get a hold of that. We are guaranteed prosperity and blessing. Amen. We're not going to deal with prosperity today. We're doing a quick review of the four king keys to kingdom living. We've already talked about giving. That is such a profound way of being blessed. Uh, seed time and harvest. When you plant a seed, you will receive a harvest. When you give, the Bible says, it shall be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men will pour into your pocket. That's the word of God. Amen. But you got to give. We talked about our health as far as last week is concerned. Uh, we've got some people that are out today because uh, relatives, fathers, and others uh, are uh, undergoing some health issues. Uh, we know that there are some people that are going to be going through some tests and some surgery this week and so I are going to be spending time with, going to see them in the hospitals and wherever they are so that we can offer uh, prayers of healing and blessing and recovery. But our health is a very uh, distinct issue. And we've got to take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what our bodies is. The Bible says so. So therefore, we have to be very careful what we put in it. We have to make sure that we exercise it. And that we live according to the way God wants us to live. We're going to be talking about prosperity. Prosperity, God wants to give us the things we need in order for us uh, to survive. Not only for us to survive, but for us to be a blessing to someone else. And he's also talking about authority. We have been given the authority uh, to uh, act as representatives here on the earth for God. Everything's going to be up here today, so don't worry about it. I thank God because he wants us to live uh, like Christ. Uh, knowing that what we have we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So today we're going to talk about the authority. And there's a word that I want you to uh, meditate on throughout this uh, lesson today. And that is the word empowerment. Or empowered. I want you to, when I say certain things, that's what I want you to concentrate on. Either the word empowerment or being empowered. The word authority is defined uh, in, the, uh, in um, the word as the power to influence or command thought, opinion, or behavior. As dwellers of the kingdom of God, we must understand the authority that has been granted to us as children of God. Think about that word, empowered. We have been empowered meaning we've been granted the right to do things and act like Christ did on the earth. Amen. A lot of people don't understand what that means. Many believers don't know about the authority that God has granted to us as his children. So let's take a look at the scripture. This is Luke 9, uh, verses 1 and 2. This is dealing with Jesus he commissioned his 12 disciples to go out from him at the beginning. It says, one day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. When you read this story and you continue into the scripture, Find it that it's so interesting that, that once the disciples came back to give their report to Jesus, he was to, they, they were so excited because they were saying, even the demons would tremble and fall at your name, at the name of Jesus. They were given the authority to go into the land 
and to drive out demonic forces. They were given the authority to lay hands on sick and people were healed. What authority has God given to us? The same. Same authority. We just don't know that we are empowered to do that. Or do we really believe that we've been granted that authority to do that? According to Strong's Concordance, the Greek word for authority is exousia. And that means the power of choice, liberty of doing as one pleases, the ability or strength with <coughs> which one is endued or empowered, which he either possesses or exercises, and the power of influence and of right or of privilege. We see that very much so, especially over in a lot of the European nations who live up under monarchies, meaning there is a king, there is a queen, there are princes, there are dukes, there are uh, the authority that's been granted to these family members that they can say and do whatever they want. Still up under the authority of what the king says, but I find it so interesting that uh, I've said it many a times, if some of the royals were to go into a store or to go into a restaurant and order a meal, if you and I, at the end of the meal, what you going to get? Bill. You're going to get a bill. Yep. And they expect you to do what? Pay hey. it. With what? Cash. Cash or money. The royals don't have to do that. All they have to do is sign their name. Guarantee, because of their name, at the end of the meal, they're not even going to get a bill. Because they've been given the right and the authority because of their name to act accordingly. This is what it means to be able to utilize and be empowered to act as Christ wants you to act. First and foremost, there is no authority without responsibility. You cannot have the authority and act any way you want to act without there being some sort of a consequence, whether it be good or whether it be bad. We see that it happening so much in our world today. Because people are acting any way they want to act without the thought of what is a consequence. Yeah. If I do good, the consequence of doing good is you're going to get good in return. You do bad, the consequences of doing bad is bad is coming. We talked about seed time and harvest time. If you plant good seeds, you will receive a good harvest. If you plant bad seeds, guess what you're going to get in return? A very bad harvest. And there are people today who are planting so much evil in the world. Yes. And evil is being returned forthwith. We must be able to operate with the same power and the authority that God has granted to man. Genesis 39 verse 4. So Joseph found favor in his sight. Talking about in the sight of um, the man who bought him. And served him. Then he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put under his authority. He was given authority. He was a slave. But because he had found favor the power and the authority to rule over all else was given to him. Daniel 2, 47 to 48. Truly, O Daniel, the king said, your God is the God of gods, ruler of kings, the revealer of mysteries, because he has told you this secret. Then the king made Daniel very great. He gave him many valuable gifts and appointed him to be ruler over the whole province of Babylon. 
as well as chief over all his wise men. David interpreted the dream that no one else could interpret. Because he found favor in the king's eyes and showed the power and the authority of the God that Daniel served. Yes. The king was able to appoint Daniel into a wonderful position of power and authority. This could happen to us and every one of us. Amen. We stand up for God and we show what God can and will do for us. Amen. Lastly, James 5, 17, 18 says, Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crop. How much power, how much authority will you have when you command that it don't rain? Loads. We went down to the Jazzeret Fest last weekend and um, it was predicted to rain the whole time we were there. We went down Friday evening, supposed to rain, so I don't want no rain. It didn't rain. <laughs> we get in the car to go down on Saturday. It was pouring down rain. Pouring down rain. We're on the way down there. I'm, I'm not saying to them, I'm thinking to myself, Lord, I don't want no rain. We got down there. As we got downtown, the rain was letting up. We got our little things, went and sat down, and kept getting lighter and lighter. Before we know it, when it came time for everything to happen, no more rain. Beautiful evening. Now, did I cause it not to rain? Yep. <laughs> do, you, do you believe that? Whether you believe it or not, I don't care. Yes. <laughs> but God's given me power and authority. Yeah. I wanted to enjoy my evenings. I said I don't want no rain. It didn't rain. Amen. So you have to See things as you believe they are. Amen. If God's given you power and given you authority, don't chop things up to, well, you know, it's just, mm. but no. Yes. You have to claim some victory over some things. Right. Either you're going to believe and trust this or you're not. Did I cause it not to rain? Yep. Sure enough. Now, if you had plans and it didn't rain, then you were just recipients of my prayer. <laughs> hey. Hey. Come on now. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Because I know in whom I believe that I know he has given me power and has given me authority. That Jesus can cause the rain and the winds and the, and, and, and the rough seas to be quiet in an instant and they got quiet and I got the same power and authority as Jesus. I can say I don't want it to rain and it don't rain. Amen. Come on. As ambassadors, our words enable us to decree and declare the impossible to become possible. Mark 4, 36 and 40. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Now, I've been out on rough sea before, rough, rough, rough water, when it was storming, when it was raining, and it stopped. And you know, it takes, a little, it takes time for those waves to calm down. No, it didn't say time. He said the wind ceased, it stopped. And then the, the, the sea became dead calm. That's power, that's authority. Didn't Jesus say in his word, these and greater things than these shall you do? Amen. So why don't we believe the authority or the empowerment 
that has been given to us. To call those things that are not as though they were. <laughs> We've been given the power of influence and the right and the privilege to be empowered to do great and wonderful things. You and I have been given the right and empowerment as Christ's ambassadors. I'm going to go back to Mark 11, 12, 14, and then 20 through 24. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing the distance of fig tree and leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, he spoke to the fig tree. May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him. I think Jesus was a little ticked off. How do you feel when you're hungry? You want to eat. eat. I went to this is sorry, you for this stuff. I went to Arby's. Probably around first part of May. Have you ever been there now? They have a fish sandwich that is out of this world. You get two five dollars. <laughs> you say, how do you know? They got good fish sandwich, don't they? All the way home from work, I'm driving. I'm tasting this fish sandwich. Man, I can't wait to get there. I pull into the parking lot. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. I'm going to get two of them because they're two for five. I go up and I'm looking at the thing and I'm like, I don't see no fish sandwich. <laughs> so I asked the man, you know, the guy came up like, what about fish? He's like, oh no, we only have that from this month to this month. And I was totally dejected. <laughs> I was hurt. I was not happy. He's like, well, you know what? I'm like, man, look. I looked at the menu and nothing looked good. I was not happy. And the man knew I wasn't happy. I went ahead and ordered something anyway. He turned around and gave me two free things for some free meals because he knows I wasn't happy. But I let him know I want fish. <laughs> Jesus wanted figs. He was not happy. Mm -hmm. From this day forward, if I can't have it, ain't nobody going to have it. <laughs> ain't that what it said? Ain't nobody ever going to eat fish from you again, you perpetrator. <laughs> you fake. You made it look like I, man, I, I'm walking up to you. I'm looking, well, figs, yeah, buddy. Yeah, I can. Fried, sliced, pureed. I don't care. I just give, I was giving me some figs today. <laughs> And Jesus go, oh, ain't no feeds. Oh, sucky, sucky. <laughs> I can't have them. Ain't nobody going to have them. And the disciples heard it. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. <laughs> that Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus answered them, have faith in God. This was a great time for a lesson. Mm -hmm. Have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, if you don't, do not doubt in your heart, but believe whatever you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. That's power. Amen. That's authority. Amen. When you can speak to your situation that's been plaguing you, it's a false image. The enemy's trying to tell you you sick, you ain't gonna get well. The enemy's trying to tell you you broke, you ain't never gonna have no money. The enemy's trying to tell you 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 know you crazy and you ain't never gonna be sane. He's, he's giving you false 
readings. Amen. Like a fig tree in leaf with no figs. But Jesus is telling you no matter what you see, no matter what your mind is trying to tell you, no matter what the enemy is trying to fool you with, you got to have faith in God. Amen. Because you can look at that situation that looks like it is devastating and tell it you got to go. Amen. That's power. That's authority. That gives you what Christ wants you to have. Because if Jesus could do it, you can too. Amen. Amen. Webster's Dictionary describes an ambassador as an official envoy, a diplomatic agent of the highest rank accredited to a foreign government or sovereign as the resident representative of his or her own government or sovereign. I found this so interesting. Whenever two nations establish formal diplomatic relations with each other, they open embassies in each other's capital city. The land on which an embassy is located is regarded as the sovereign territory of the nation whose embassy is located there. That sovereignty is recognized and respected by the government of the host nation as well as other nations. In other words, for example, the United States Embassy in Moscow, Russia is American soil. Just as much as New York, Texas, or Maryland. Even though it's located geographically on Russian soil, within its ground, the government of the Soviet Union has no jurisdiction or authority. That is American soil. Halfway round the world, that's where America is. It is an embassy. It is representative. I found it so interesting that uh, this presidential administration has moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Amen. 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 That's awesome, isn't it? Yes. And the people was upset. I mean, upset. Yep. Turn it upside down. We can't have this. You don't care. <laughs> we want this in Jerusalem, the and holy city. Yes. Of Israel, God's promised land. Amen. Jerusalem. Christ was born. Jerusalem. Amen. Crucified. Jerusalem. This is where we're talking about. It's now American soil in Jerusalem. That's how the power of an embassy is. Whatever area over which the authority of a government rests becomes that government's property. All the authority and power of the nation represented by that government is in effect on that property. In the same way, we are ambassadors of Christ Amen. and of the kingdom of God. Our homes, our office, our church, and indeed anywhere our influence extends becomes an embassy of heaven. I found that so interesting. We are Christ's ambassadors. We represent the embassy of heaven. Mm. Meaning wherever we go, God told Abraham, God told Moses, where you put your foot, that becomes now holy ground. So Abraham, as far as you can see, wherever you put your, your, your foot on, that's your, that's your ground. That's your property. Being that we are Christ's ambassadors, 
The embassy of heaven goes where we go. Amen. That's why we can go into any situation in any place and claim the authority of God because we are the representatives of Christ. We occupy land in a foreign country, but the property belongs to the government of heaven. As Christ's ambassadors, we represent the kingdom government of God. We are diplomats of his kingdom in the world. Amen. Mark 16, 17, 18 says that these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly... It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I find that so interesting that you can do this anywhere in the world without having a license to practice medicine, without having a theology degree that you can speak a word and demons tremble, that you can do whatever you need to do for Christ because you represent him. Just like any embassy that's in any other country, it represents the country that it's from. And since the whole world is God's, wherever we go as his representatives, we have the ability to cause things to happen. John 14, 12 to 13 says, I tell you for certain that if you have faith in me, you will do the same things that I am doing. You will do even greater things now that I am going back to the Father. Ask me and I will do whatever you ask. This way the Son will bring honor to the Father. Whatever Jesus did, you can do that and greater. And more. You got more time than he had. His ministry was only three years long. How long have you been saved? How long have you know God? Wow. What authority and power do you have that you can do the things that Jesus did? We have to understand and know the empowerment that has been given to us and use that for the glory of God. Acts 1 and 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You said before, where is your Jerusalem? Where is your Judea? Where is your Samaria? That's in your sphere of influence, your home, your neighborhood your job, your school, wherever you go, you are an ambassador. You are a representative of Christ. And you have the power to witness, to tell people, to show people the difference between you and the world that will draw people to Christ like a moth is attracted and drawn to a flame. Living in the kingdom of God with the authority as princes and priests. It moves mountains. You set captives free. You heal the sick. You claim victory over the enemy. And you retrieve everything that the devil has stolen from us. This is the power. This is the empowerment. That has been given to us as children of God. We no longer have to worry about things in life. The Bible says that you don't worry about the things that are coming. He tells you to look at the lilies of the field or look at the flowers that grow. They don't produce anything for you. Nothing but beauty, but God makes sure that they grow. I was looking across the street, my, my, my neighbor across the street, he has wonderful roses. He does roses. And I looked at him this morning and I'm like, man, the bad boys are just pow! Colors and the beauty is like, bam! Yeah, that's beautiful stuff. But God takes care of them. The birds, the bees. What do they do? Nothing. But God makes sure that they eat. That in the winter time they are protected. During the rain they are protected. He takes care of them. Now if he'll take care of the animals, if he'll take care of the flora, won't he take care of you? Yes. Not only will he take care of you, he's given you power and the authority to do things for the kingdom of God. 
We have to walk in the authority that God has given to us. You don't just sit back on it and wait for others to do things. We need to take charge. Amen. Calling things that are not as though they were and reaching out. No, it ain't going to rain. And then watch it not rain. Don't go, well, I hope it ain't going to rain. <laughs> no, Lord, don't let it rain. It's not going to rain. And it won't rain. Now you believe it or you don't. Amen. I believe it. We have a wonderful gathering coming up next Saturday. Yes. Guess what? It's not going to rain. It's not going to rain. Amen. I don't care what the weatherman may say. It gonna, if it does, it's going to go around us. It ain't going to be nowhere where we are. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a Amen. wonderful time. But it's not going to rain. Right. What do you want to declare in your life? What do you need to declare in your life? What is plaguing you that you need to get rid of? That you need what mountains to be moved? Declare, decree, through the power of Christ and the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, and watch God operate. Amen. Because you've been given the authority to live as ambassadors of Christ in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And amen. I want to thank you for watching this video. I pray that you were blessed by it, that it encourages you to have a deeper relationship with God, that you continue to fight the good fight of faith and grow strong and courageous in your daily battles with the enemy. I encourage you to subscribe to our page, like us on Facebook, and log on to our website. There you can submit a prayer request and support this ministry through a financial gift. And remember, if each one can reach one, and a reached one can reach one, then a one one will have one one, and the kingdom will have been advanced one soul at a time. Thank you and have a great day.